All right, I'm back from uh, Windows Workstation Recovery. As I was trying to tell you before, uh, my Windows machine decided to blue screen. Uh, basically, my IP didn't get changed for some reason. I don't know why it was. So I did, uh, I did show int VLAN one. It still said the old IP. So I'm like, fine. So I did show run, right, just to make sure the, the it was VLAN one. I don't know why I didn't have to do that. And then conf t int VLAN one. And then just change the IP address at the command line, because that's how I roll. I did all that, hit enter, and that changed the IP. But then as you saw, I didn't have the uh, the command in there to allow the administrative access, but now I do. So uh, now we can move on with the next uh, thing we were going to do. And the next thing we were going to do is configure the firewall. Um, if we look at the firewall, by default, it says inside we have one implicit incoming rule, which means incoming into the interface, and that is a permit rule. So we will, it says implicit rule, permit all traffic to less secure networks. So that means anything that comes in uh, to, the inter to the inside interface is going to a less secure network, we will permit it. And then we have this other rule, global uh, rule, that says any, any, deny, it's the implicit rule to drop all traffic uh, on the outside interface. So how do we know what interface is more secure or less secure? Well, if we go back to device setup tab, if we look at the interfaces, they have a number associated with them, the security level. The outside interface security level is zero. The inside interface security level is 100. So a lower number means a less secure interface. So in this case, we only have two interfaces. If you recall, when we went through the wizard, the DMZ interface had 50. So the DMZ interface would be considered less secure than the inside interface. So this lets traffic from the inside interface go to anything with a lower number, which in this case is the outside interface. So any traffic going out will be allowed with this setup. Uh, a couple of notes down here. Here's a checkbox that says enable traffic between two or more interfaces which are configured with the same security levels. So in theory, if we had another interface that had 100, uh, traffic would not be allowed unless we, we checked, that, uh, checked that box. And this says enable traffic between two or more hosts connected to the same interface. So that comes into play if you have more than one subnet uh, off of the interface and it's somehow routing between uh, those, those uh, different subnets, then that, that, that button might come into play. So with that being said, we're gonna go back over here and look at our um, look at our uh, firewall rules, and basically we're letting anything out and nothing in. So we want to modify that. We want to be uh, security conscious, and we want to uh, follow best practices. And best practices are you only let out what needs to get out, let let out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a rule on the inside interface. We're gonna send it to any. We're gonna set the source to any. Um, could we change that to be our actual subnets? Yeah, we could. We probably should. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to use any, any right now. And we're going to start specifying some things that we want to let out. So we want to let out some very specific protocols that we know need to get out. Like we know we need to let HTTP out of our network. So you select that. And I think you need to hit the service tab down here. Right. And... We'll hit OK, and then we'll hit OK. So we changed that rule that let anything, or we added a rule that let anything from HTTP out. So we're going to add another rule. We're going to let anything HTTPS out. Let's see if there's HTTPS up here somewhere. HTTPS. So yeah, so we're going to let HTTPS out. Okay, we're going to add another rule. We're going to let DNS out. Uh, DNS. DNS. X. That's weird. I don't know why it says that. Clear. Let's see if we can figure out if there's already a pre-built object for DNS. Domain, and we're gonna let domain out. I don't know why I can't call it DNS. We're gonna let domain out. So with that config, we're gonna let uh, web traffic out on port 80 and 443, and we're gonna let DNS traffic out. Is there anything else we need to let out through uh, for everything? 
uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. It depends on what what you're using, uh, what you're trying to connect to. If you're if you're if you need to SSH out of your network to get to some devices on the internet to manage them, then you need to let SSH out. Um, other than that, you, you might have some specific services you need to let out from specific servers. Like if you got a mail server, you might want to let the mail ports out from the mail server, uh, and that would be it. So we have these uh, rules we put in. We're going to add one last rule. The default action of any uh, access list uh, is deny implicitly, but we want to put an uh, explicit deny rule. So we're going to put an any, any, any deny. So this is going to deny everything else. So we're going to let those three things out and we're going to deny everything else. So that's what we're, what we're going to put for our, for our outbound rules. And I hit apply, so let's go see if it applied. Yeah, so if we look, if, let me scroll back up. If we look, I added the access list in the GUI, and this, the heck, where did my mouse go? There it is. All right, there we go. I added these rules in the GUI, and they showed up in the, in the access list. It says, hey, access list one, extended permit, object, TCP, UDP, any, any, www. That's weird. I don't know why it says object groups, TCP, UDP. Oh, because that's the, that, <laughs> because that is uh, UDP, TCP, uh, any, any. I just wanted TCP, any, TCP, 443. So let's go back and see if we can find that. Sorry, TCP 80, not 443. I want HTTP just TCP. There we go. That's what I actually wanted. So it looks like we could put more than one uh, object in the same rule. So I could have done one rule with all these things in it, but we'll leave it like that for now. And then I'll apply that. And then we'll do a show run again. So now we have uh, our access list. If you're doing this at the command line, you're like, oh, forget that GUI. I'm just going to put these access lists in the command line. There's an extra step you have to do. You have to create the access list, and then you have to apply it to an interface in a direction. So if we come down here somewhere, there's a access group command. Should be an access group command. Let's try and find it. There we go. Access group inside access in in interface inside. So that basically applies the list we created. If you don't apply the list, then it doesn't do anything. So this creates the access list called inside access in, and then we applied it with the access group command. So that was for how we're going to allow traffic. We're going to change the traffic we allow out of our network.